Oh, here we are. Welcome. One and all. Is this episode 12? It's episode 12. We've it's... made it, a, well, over a year. <laughs> yeah, over we, a year. We survived longer than the brewery that we started. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> started out at. Is that harsh? Yeah. Is that harsh? Welcome to Homebrew, guys. Our semi-monthly <laughs> podcast where we talk about the world of brewing. We do and... it when you have time. And you have time right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's turned into both. We we had things scheduled, and then life got busy. Mm-hmm. Unexpected turns were made this past weekend. We were meant to do it, and you know, things we, happened. We can talk about that here in a minute. <laughs> but we're back, and we're here to chat about brewing. And we got a bunch of fun topics. Um, I want to start us off by prepping you for the end of this, because we oh. have a special segment where we are going to take your confessions. And we are going to help oh, you atone for your homebrewing <laughs> your homebrewing confessions. So this could be, you know, I uh, sous vide for 78 hours straight or whatever your, your oh. thing you did. I don't know. It's, is that a confession or is that just a <laughs> thing? Uh, that it might just be a brag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a humble brag. So uh, whatever you have, and we'll we'll uh, talk at the end. We'll have some fun. But hey, welcome everybody. Steven's calling you uh, fancy pants. I think he's making fun of your shorts. <laughs> <laughs> fancy pants. What? <laughs> so fancy pants. Uh, yeah, get your homebrewing confessions ready. We're gonna absolve you of your homebrewing sins at the end of the podcast. So uh, just you know, yeah. think about your answer, and we'll prompt you as we get close to the end. We'll guide you. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll guide you. Our sons and daughters <laughs> toward toward penance. Well, um, BC, we have been um, off a, a month, and so we've got mm-hmm. a full show oh, of so a much ton of news. Like we were going through all of our creating all, <laughs> I guess, compiling all of the uh, news stories, and the world of brewing's really had a um, both tragic, exciting, oh yeah, wild. So Year, much happening, month, brother. So much happening in the world of brewing. Garrett, do you call yourself a home brewer? I do call myself a home brewer. Even though you primarily make mead? Uh-huh. When you're mixing up a mead, do you say, I'm brewing some mead today? You know, in the this right, is, this in is the right group, I call myself a, a mazer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but to my, to my uh, mom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call myself a home brewer. Yeah, I don't like pers- I don't like the term mazer. There's a guy that attempted to school me in my comments a week or two ago that you you do not call it brewing if it's not beer, and I I said well you know what do you what do you call it <laughs> language changes yeah yeah he said well that doesn't make you right or any less cringe. All right, buddy. I want to know what what it's called then. I mean, I did a poll on my my community page and it was like eighty seven percent they call themselves homebrewers. Yeah. I mean, I literally don't have another word for it. <laughs> fermenter, I think is what he... Oh. I'm a fermenter. Yeah, it sounds like you're oh, like... Oh, it's so pretentious. It's got this stir, like... <laughs> stirring up sludge yeah. in the bottom of a trash can. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't personally love Mazer. What do you call yourself? Yeah, I, I mean, if you're in the comments, leave us, uh, leave us a, a idea. Are you a <laughs> fermenter or are you a... <laughs> Home brewer. <laughs> You're a brewer. Like, language changes. Yeah. I, I get it that back when brewing meant a mash and a boil and all of that, that yeah. the beer guys really, you know, they're masculine and tough and and no one can keep them down with their testosterone. They wanted to be called brewers. And mm. these dainty, wimpy winemakers and mead makers with their limp wrists couldn't possibly be brewers, too. No. They're making girl not. drinks, nope. right? But the world's changed. You know, language changes. Language, yep. And it ain't the 70s anymore, guys. <laughs> We're getting out of there. It's just, it's, I just, I don't understand this, like, this drive to, to, like, overcorrect yeah. other people. Yeah. And, and not that I'm anybody special, right? But I'm an educator on the internet. Right. With a, a fairly respectable following, I think I would know whether or not it's appropriate to say brewing 
I don't know though. This guy commented. <laughs> He's, he must know a lot. You know, he just he yeah. came through. It is an interesting topic, and I do find <laughs> it. You know, Stephen just said in the comments, um, he prefer he wears the Mazer badge with honor, and, and there's nothing against the word Mazer. I think what's funny is the the word itself has had. Um, if you look back at kind of some of the drama history <laughs> recently, yeah, there's been some silliness that comes with the word. And I'm not going to get into it, but regardless, I think we are brewers, and most people like <laughs> who make mead. You might make a lot of mead. You might also brew a beer. Does that mean like does that term change? Like, are you no longer a mazer? Like, do you jump into the right. now I'm a home brewer because I've made one beer? <laughs> like, I don't know. It's interesting. Well, and and these these folks who are they are, are rooting their Nintendo DS. They mm. call themselves home brewers. Yeah. Should they only be able to call themselves that if they throw their DS the in, a, <laughs> in a pot of boiling water and hit it with some hops? Oh. Get out of town. Language changes. I'm I'm a home brewer, and I'll, I'll call myself that. That's what a lot of folks are saying in the chat. Mad uh, scientist. There we go. That's Dominic right. says, uh, if people understood what mead was, I might use the term mazer. But brewer is a great term to actually communicate the rough idea of what we're doing. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. Well, and it's semantics. And semantics in brewing are, it's probably the worst part of home brewing in general. And mead making is all the semantics. Um, I made a whole video one time. I was so mad at some point. I made a video about semantics. I don't think it did anything. But... <laughs> I felt like I felt good after because I was like, maybe I showed some stupid right. Facebook moderator to chill out. I don't Man, know. I, you know, and I take, you know, this because yeah. we we send each other screenshots of comments all the time. I <laughs> take literally every comment with a grain of salt, whether it's good, whether they're praising my work, or whether yeah. they're telling me I'm a dumbass. It just all rolls off my back, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so uh, for those of you, I saw somebody said that they had seen that that comment thread. I wasn't like offended or, or trying to be harsh with the guy. I was trying to have a little bit of a back and forth, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, if y'all saw the amount of stupid stuff people say to us it about is. us <laughs> in the comments, it's far more negative than it is positive. And uh, you just kind of build up a thick yeah. skin to it. You just laugh. You kind of have to laugh at it and go like, <laughs> interesting. I have been called literally everything you, you can You got hipster called. the other day, too. I did. I got called a hipster. That was fun. I'll take hipster. You got called Ryan Gosling. A Walmart Ryan Gosling, though. (laughs) (laughs) So that was... uh, I'm envious. You want to be Walmart Ryan Gosling? I wish. I'm more like Walmart Jesse Pinkman. (laughs) Uh, So (laughs) we had... uh, Yeah, we had the podcast scheduled for Saturday. Turns out I had to have a tooth ripped out of my head Saturday morning, and so... I texted Garrett from the dentist chair and said, uh, probably not going to be happening tonight. Well, you like started by acting like, and I was like, I don't, like in my head, I was like, <laughs> I don't think this is a good idea. Like you'd be talking like this the whole time, like your face would be all numb. And yeah, that was going to be a bad, that would have been a rough podcast. Not only for you, but maybe for, the for listeners. Our, for, for, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For our television audience. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I have been complaining that I thought this tooth was cracked since like last October Mm -hmm. and they couldn't see it on x-ray, yada, yada, yada. Long story short, it definitely cracked on Friday and uh, Saturday it slipped right on out of my head at the dentist office. As they do. No, no tension required. They just slid it right out. So I got a bridge on, I got a hole in my head. Feeling good. No, I'm not. I got no <laughs> prescription painkillers, and I'm not supposed to drink wow. because I'm on antibiotics. But I understand you have a bottle that you were going to. I do. For me. I do. Should we do that now? Shall we? We shall. If you're alright with that. Yeah, and then we can we can jump into the. So into before the news. we we are going to jump in, in the brews in a second, but I have um I kind of sprung this on BC. I have a mead. I'm sending off to some competitions soon, and I was curious to get his take on what he thinks it's going to score. At these competitions. And, you know, it's it's okay. all subjective because it's judges and personalities and everything. So I'm very curious. This is a mixed berry mead. It's a sack uh, strength mead. Okay. It's going to be sweet. My first uh, time ever doing this. So. Diedrich says we should all wish to be as pretty as a Walmart Ryan Gosling. <laughs> did you watch the Barbie movie yet? I did. What do you think? 
I didn't think it was terrible. It was very, very adult. It, like they had done it obviously, yeah, to appease the adult crowd, which is not like a bad thing. I think that's the probably the market that it's. So Ahsoka, uh, uh, Ahsoka spoilers. I don't know if you've been watching Ahsoka on Disney Plus. Uh-uh. If you have, plug your ears for the next fifteen seconds. Got him plugged. <laughs> okay. The <laughs> the teenager in the Barbie movie is the same girl who plays young Ahsoka Tano in oh. the new series. Okay. And, you know, obviously she's got, like, a head tails and makeup and all that stuff. But when we were watching the Barbie movie, I was like, I recognize I this. person. I know this voice. I didn't recognize her face. I looked it up. Sure enough. She's, she was in, um, I think, Infinity Wars, too. Oh, wow. So this kid is like. That's pretty big time. Yeah. Wow. It's the next big thing. I, know, I thought the Barbie movie That's was good. fine. Yeah. It was kind of boring. My wife keeps trying to get me to for Halloween to like, bleach my <laughs> hair and shave my beard, and I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. I this she, is this face is trademarked. This is, <laughs> <laughs> no, there's the the uh, blowback of your your students mm, making fun of you, thinking just, you're a little boy. It takes about six months to recover from gotcha. that. So, all right, what do you think? Oh, mixed berry mead, mixed berry mead. Sack strength. What's the uh, final gravity after back sweetening? Do you know? 1030, 10, maybe 1035. I can smell that in it. It mm-hmm. smells sweet. Lots of berries. This one was like five gallon batch, um, 24 pounds of mixed berries with tons of pectic enzyme, um, 30 pounds of honey. Dang, dude. Water up. And so, I mean, it, is, it started off at like 1140 or something ridiculous. Conrad asked, why is there no pregnant Barbie? There is. Midge, oh. right? She was briefly. Yes. Yeah, and that, that's the bit. And the thing <laughs> is that <laughs> there's all these rejected Barbies. <laughs> and she was one of those. Oh, Midge. Yeah, um, very sweet. Let's prepare your. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get ready for it. I'm very curious. You see how it does, though? It's jammy. Mm-hmm. It's sweet. It's definitely got a little bit of um, that kind of country fruit wine yeah. flavor in uh-huh. there. How old is this? Two and a half months. Okay. For two and a half months, this is spectacular. <laughs> yeah. I brewed this thing, yeah, two and a half months ago. If you told ago. me this was two and a half years, I would think there are some issues here. But no, for two and a half months, it's great. Yep. I mean, that that traditional you tried earlier was almost four months old. and This is two <laughs> and, and a half to drink. With, with a little bit of, I, I oaked it for a bit and... Um, now, of course, judges are not going to know that, so they're just going to see all the things I'm sure you're you're noting. Mostly, what I'm noting is that like cidery thing that you get with the country fruit wine that yeah. eventually will age out. Yeah, but I always pick that up because I started on country fruit wines, mm-hmm. and so in my early days when I was drinking everything after like a month and a half. I got very used to just accepting that that was a flavor. Yeah, you're like, oh, this is just what we do. <laughs> yeah, and then you know, you find a bottle that's been sitting back for two years, and you taste it, and you're like, oh, oh, that flavor goes away, and it actually tastes a lot better. Yeah. Uh, no, this is good. What's your prediction? Um, what, what's so it going to get? If I was a mead judge at Mazer Cup, and I had just drank all of the sugary Robitussin that they give first place medals to. I, I'm trying to, I'm almost appealing to that crowd. I know, that's what <laughs> like, I'm saying. <laughs> and comparing it that that's the issue. Is yeah. this is gonna be stacked up. They're gonna they're gonna taste three three year old things and then yours <laughs> and then four two year old things. Yeah. Right. And so I would have to dock it for age, but I would still probably put that at like a thirty five. Hmm. It's very good. Yeah. I just want you to put it away for a year <laughs> yeah why'd you send it so early you should right. have waited three years that would be my comment <laughs> yeah. is please send this again next year yeah i've written that on mead stampede score mm-hmm. sheets before all right 35 i'll Pretty keep good. that in mind 35 i'll let you know in a month i after bet after some a of these year it'll be a 42 some of these competitions are gonna be over and by the next podcast and uh we'll have an update texas longhouse mead is here the one and only Longhouse. The mead. only. I, I understand. We have to. <laughs> yeah. I was a slight clap for. That's uh, Carlos from Texas Longhouse Mead. He's he's building his meadery. He is. I had a podcast with him. There's gonna be one coming out soon. Right on. Chatting all about that, and um, it's gonna be fun to. Well, we're doing multi part. This first part was just like prepping, planning, talking about designing, all these things. Next one's gonna be 
now it's started. Like, here's the building. What are some things you're, awesome. you're learning about and stuff? And then the final one we've already planned. Um, we're going to do go, a road trip? We're going to do a road trip, and we're going to go, and we're going to do it in the meadery. That's cool, man. That'll be fun. I'm coming with you. Yeah. You can just strap me to the hood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we um, gotta get in the bruise. Yeah, yeah, we do, we do. I was gonna. Uh, there's a couple comments I was gonna mm, read. Okay. Um, correct me on pronunciation here. Z- Zench, hmm? Lord of Change, says I'm doing a mixed berry mead right now with all Alaskan wild berries. Oh. The wife and I picked. Oh, foraged, that's fun. Foraged Alaskan wild. What's berry. the? There's one that has a category that did foraged this year. There's a there's a meat comp that did it. Someone will correct me. There was one that was had a foraged category, and that was interesting. That's cool. I love a good foraged. foraged. I'd love to do that at some point. My foraged uh, sand plum mead won second place at uh, Orpheus. Good. There yeah. you go. Hype, 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 hype. Okay, should we do? Should we should we should jump into the news. We're in the brews. I almost. I have the ability to do sound effects on here. I realized today. <laughs> so next podcast, I'm gonna nice. hit a button, and there's gonna be a sound. I love it. Whatever that sound is, is unknown yet. (laughs) (laughs) All right. right. Are you starting us off here? I'll start us off. There, this one is interesting because it's not, I mean, it is brewing. It's fermentation. Fermentation. Kind of. So. (laughs) Adjacent. Cheesemakers are putting edible microchips into that are the size of a grain of sand so really 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 tiny and edible obviously into these cheese wheels to combat counterfeiters and basically i I didn't realize this was a problem that counterfeit was (laughs) uh an issue but i could see why it is i i I, it's a very interesting resolve to say like you know what we need to do let's put some chips microchips in there i guess we can track it and well and they're they're proximity based chips yeah so you can't you have to be pretty close to it to scan it yeah because they don't want people you know scanning them from you know 30 feet away through the wall and then replicating the the data on the chip yeah that's it's crazy that is crazy but you know, i know they're super expensive that's the thing is i've heard how expensive parmesan is and how expensive oh i thought you like, meant edible microchips no uh, no, no, so no no i no. eat them like candy but but like, these cheese wheels i mean i hear they're super expensive <laughs> But it's a currency. It's literally a currency. So it makes sense, though. Interesting. You know, uh, a cohort of ours, Gavin Weber, who does cheese videos on mm-hmm. YouTube, uh, the curd nerd, he got in trouble. I guess there, I want to say there was like a, a DMCA or a cease and desist he got because he had put up a video on how to make like Reggiano cheese or something. And the governing body sent him the cease and desist and said, you can't teach people how to make our cheese. That's, it would be like if we were saying, here's how to make champagne. And like the French wine industry came after <laughs> France us. France comes after us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He got in trouble. Uh-huh. He had to take it down. And so he puts the video back up and it's like, the title was like how to make a cheese like Reggiano uh-huh. or something like that. Like he really, he was pretty sneaky about it. Adjacent um, to, but he did it's a whole, like, a whole video that before on it. The video. Uh, <laughs> interesting so i mean that's you know they don't want people ripping off their brand that's I fair guess. though i mean it makes sense but it, it's very interesting i just imagine like i guess if you don't know you're eating a edible edible microchip then you're probably fine but like if you're eating that and all of a sudden you're like what is this thing like surely they they put it in the rind right they have to there's Not no way. like in the middle of it <laughs> but who's eating the rind maybe someone's eating the rind I mean, you, put it, you, put it in, it. you put it in soup you put it in like oh. broth. You boil it to flavor the broth. I've done it. Anyway. And then you still eat it after that? I mean, I think it melts. Oh, right? I guess that's true. It's I guess outside. your microchip would fall to the bottom. What's this? <laughs> I'm imagine some grandpa in like Alabama who's like. That's how I cracked my tooth, actually. Yeah. <laughs> All those microchips you've been eating. All right, next one. Crazy. This one's. Um, um, but we, we got fraudulence and counterfeit as the top two <laughs> for this this month's episode. So. so the story is about wines that were aged in the ocean. Have you heard of this company? I have heard. I heard there's a, there was one of those beer, too. People were, like, aging these beers. and Yeah, so they, they put the bottles under the ocean. They rock around in the, in the waves and the tides under there. And then they, they claim that this improves the quality of the <laughs> wine. Well, apparently uh, there was an issue. 
with these wines being what no. fraudulent issues <laughs> and uh so they are having to destroy all of them and so how do you do how does one destroy a wine i mean we'll we'll see a story coming up about wine pouring down a yeah, portuguese do you street pour is it more dramatic than that they're like <laughs> they're taking a baseball bat to it like what's the real what's the real destroying of a wine yeah do, can you does it explain what the fraud was do you have a um, i guess i could pull up the doc on my phone the product itself is illegal that's what this says oh really it's just straight up illegal Let's oh, see. 2,000 oh, bottles says, of wine owned by California-based brand Ocean Fathoms were recently seized and destroyed. It wasn't approved. The wine wasn't approved by any of these, like, oh, affirming Operating agencies. without a license to sell. Yeah. So they just basically were... Mm, uh, it's like, is that fraudulent or is that just It seems mismanaged? like you could just, like, find them and then back charge them for whatever right. they owed for the licenses and let them keep the product. It says it was a misdemeanor. I don't know. Shrug. Maybe it's not as big of a story as it should have been, or vice versa. It's more just wild. I don't. I just. I guess that. What? No. What? It's it's a beer. That's what it is. There's a beer company that um, ages it in like Antarctica or something like that in this like beer underwater fridge sort of situation. And essentially, it just it's like stouts and all this stuff like that. And then you can buy them for ridiculous Too much money. amounts of money yeah because it's like it's been aged in an ice cube in antarctica <laughs> you know and someone's like i'll pay 500 bucks give I me mean, a bottle a gimmick's a gimmick right and people will pay that's the thing maybe they just saw that and they said "Ooh, i can get ocean aged wine wow <laughs> steven says i can help destroy it <laughs> <laughs> i'm very good at that all right what's next man video game news I think, we, uh, I I think this to... might be old news, but I only recently saw it. So, um, oh my gosh, oh my god! I have ad block. Leave me alone. The the website has a has an ad block. Okay, like get around yeah. thing. Can you just? It, the... All right, Sims <laughs> has finally decided after years of requesting. Why is this one showing up? After years of requesting from the Mead. And wine community, that we want to make it in the game. We, we want to live our second life to its fullest. Second life. <laughs> so, uh, uh, uh. yeah, you can you, you can, can make that. mead. You can get on there, and there's a little uh, picture of somebody stomping some grapes. It looks like, <laughs> run, and uh, they've got the wine press. They got everything there. Um, do they have shoes on? No, they just have the interesting. Yeah, thing. man. Yeah. So like when you're when you're done with your brewing at night, your brewing of your mead, you can get on your old laptop, your your Windows Vista laptop and break out We've the Sims. Done other gaming news. What was the other one? There was another brew brew game that came yeah, out. Yeah, there's actually Switch. There's a beer game that I almost put into this that mm. recently came out on iOS. Oh. Uh, but I uh, I almost downloaded it, and then I, I read some of the Steam reviews and realized like it's a total waste of money. Mm. But yeah, there's, there's there was that uh, game where you like brew different styles of beer. Yeah, yeah. I just don't love the idea of like getting to the end of brewing something in a digital realm and then being like, cool. And that's it. You know, like yeah. just walk away. Like, oh, well, yeah. I'll never taste this thing. You know, I decided to throw horseradish in it for some reason in this video game and you have no idea if it turns out i have no idea what if that's it what if that's the new thing i'll never know because i can't taste this thing you know it's one we're actually having on my discord server today a conversation about this that like some people get into the fermentation hobby thinking that it's going to be more active than it is and it is very much a passive hobby yeah. You have to, that's why it's like we suggest to start more it's right because like you're gonna get to the point where you're like I've been looking at this especially mead you know for two months and it's just still bubbling you're like what the heck like do something yeah <laughs> stop let me do something next like people want to open it and mess with it and stir it and generally you just put the yeast in and then just forget about it for right. a month or two. And unless you have something to distract you. <laughs> like The Sims 4. Like the, maybe that's it. Maybe that's why people are going to The Sims 4 and saying, you know what? I'm going to go make it. It turns out faster. Tomorrow morning, I'll wake up and I'll be able to 
see what this is. <laughs> Nathan asks, The Sims is still getting made? Yeah, There's I, a lot of Sims games. No, I saw a stat the other day. It's over $1,000 if you want to buy The Sims 4 and all the expansion packs that have been made for it. For it, for the new one? What? Yeah. How? How can you have that Because there are much? so many. There's like... Walk your dog Sims and have a baby Sims and run a carnival Sims. Like, there's all these different expansion packs. That's crazy. Yeah, dude. I just. And I, I'm sure mead Sims. making costs money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. All right. I'm going to let you take this next one because I think it's. Um, well, it's your turn, anyways. But. Well, because it's politically. No, no, no. I think you just will explain, <laughs> actually explain this better than me because I was reading it a couple times and I was like. I had, to, I had to double take to get my story right. Yeah, so essentially there is this very strange political movement to ban and burn books in our country right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's it's really easy to just jump right to like World War II uh, metaphors. Yeah. But there's literally a scene in Indiana Jones where they're burning books and Indy walks up to Hitler and Hitler signs his book. Like, that's literally a thing that happened. That didn't age well. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I guess Indiana Jones didn't meet Hitler, probably. But, like, they, they did yeah. burn books, right? Yeah. And so there's this weird political movement in our country to, to get rid of books. And, uh, you know, so there's been a lot of back and forth about it. Well, there are some breweries that are teaming up with libraries uh, to do a push against this. Uh, They say they're pouring up a cold one for a cause. Um, Kathleen Sparrow, the executive director of the public library that's involved in this, says, Our library system, libraries across the country, offer programs and access to all, and we believe that you should be able to read whatever you want, and that's reflected in the collection here in our library. And then uh, one of the brewers that's involved says, I have three daughters. They go to the library. It's cool to support and work and have it be a full circle type thing. We always try to have events here that have a ton of community participation. And so they're just teaming up to, to promote literacy and, you know, the flipping first amendment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just thought it was kind of like a cool, it is cool, you know, it's, it's nice to see folks in our sphere of brewing mm-hmm. doing community Extra outreach. Things, yeah type stuff and so i'm i'm proud of the effort i hope it continues i hope it spreads um you know i probably read some of the most scandalous stuff in my life in middle and high school because i had access to it through the public library system and through school libraries and i learned a lot of stuff that i was never going to learn in my sheltered home by reading and studying at the library and i think it's an important resource and i think people self-regulate yeah you know if somebody picks up a book and they get three or four pages in and it's not for them, they don't keep reading it, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, they. they you're right. The people will. Will stop reading something if they, if they don't want to. But there's no. There's extremes. We're going to extremes now, and that's where like. Yeah. Yeah. It is wild. And I don't care how anybody feels about my opinion on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway. Super cool. Curious what y'all think about it. And um, I'm sure that we'll get comments on this from lunatics who uh, probably have bad opinions. Um, BC. Yes, sir. I have been inspired to make beer without malt. (laughs) Have you felt that inspiration recently? I I have not. Not recently. Are you sure? Because there's a New York brewery (laughs) that um, they're hoping to revolutionize the way we brew beer. Well, without malt. (laughs) No malt involved. Yeah, no, no malt. Just so, a freaking cocktail of enzymes. So they said, <laughs> malting is incredibly old school and inefficient. Um, it, this is the owner of Cool Cousin Brewing in New York, wherever the New York. Um, they're on a mission to make homebrewing beer, not homebrewing, making beer more environmentally friendly. The brewing industry has made improvements to water and energy use, but malting hasn't changed much over time. His solution is to make beer without malt. Instead, it uses raw, unmalted barley. Mm -hmm. It creates wort by adding an exogenous enzyme cocktail in the mash. 
Mmm. Little enzyme. Yeah, I, I, there's another article that was published on this that had a rundown of the enzymes that are involved, and it's like five or six different things they're mixing in there yeah. to get those starches to convert properly. Right. But the the interesting thing about this, and I don't know if it made it into the snippet that I, I gave you, but it it's something like 10 gallons of water to make one pound of malted grain. Hmm. And you don't have any of that water expenditure here because you're just using the raw grain. Right. Or I mean, I'm, surely it's like roasted or whatever, but yeah. you're not malting the grain, which takes a significant amount of water because the, the grains soak it up. They recede, they soak it up, they recede, they eventually sprout. Mm. And that is when the starch has been converted to sugar. And that's when you stop the process. Yeah. Right. And so really it's a more responsible way to do it. If there isn't some really strange side effect. Yeah. I wonder what the, <laughs> what's this going to taste like? That's all I want to know. I mean, I, I am all about environmental consciousness and being being on top of that. I just wonder, can we make a product that is, is going to be the same tasting or be- anywhere near the same? Beedrick has an interesting question. Can that legally be called beer? Are they a brewer? <laughs> Are they a brewer? I don't know. Do we got to create a new, a new category of uh, brewing? Enzymer? <laughs> It sounds like a name that a millennial would give their kid. Enzymer. <laughs> and uh. Yeah. It'd be spelled like E N Z Y M E H R. I mean you probably see these names all the time. Not Enzymer. I've never seen <laughs> never seen that name. But give it some time. Everything's got a E I G H on it right now. It's true. Kind of weird. Um, all right. Unmalted beer. What do y'all think? I, I'm excited. Let's try it. Send me a bottle, Cool Cousins oh. Brewing. We should reach out to them. Maybe they can at least like give us a little thing of their enzymes, and we could try We could try it. You, you think know? they would do that? You think that <laughs> proprietary knowledge that they'd be like... They don't have to tell us what's in it, right? They can just like... I mean, that's probably get lifted by the post office for being an unmarked like white liquid. powder <laughs> it's yeah coming in this ranch too oh man okay where are we at oh yeah here we go oh this is a this is wild the portuguese wine spill this is if you haven't seen this story then you must not have been on the internet in the last oh, yeah. week this and a half been all over. it is everywhere right now small town got messed up try that in a small town <laughs> ah ah uh, yeah, 600,000 gallons of red wine from a distillery. Their tank burst, spilled down the hill, and uh, apparently destroyed some some property. Like, can you imagine? I've spilled mead before. Can you imagine the smell? Can you imagine the smell of it? The cleanup side of that? Your house just gets bombarded with yeah. thousands of gallons of wine all of a sudden? Here's the video here. That... Yeah, well, so it, it all ended up in a field, and they're, <laughs> they're having to they re- remove all of the soil from the field and do, like, some treatment process to rehab the soil. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, after Mead Stampede uh, last year, they took all the bottles, as instructed by the homeowners of the house that we judged Mead Stampede, <laughs> they took all the bottles and dumped them off the back patio. And for a good three or four months, there was just a bald patch where grass would not grow. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> killed the soil, literally. Yeah. I yeah. want to surf it. Someone, can you imagine <laughs> just getting, getting like a boogie board and just? <laughs> yeah, Conrad's right. It's gonna be vinegar in a week. Imagine, imagine. Let me pull this video back up. Imagine you're one of the houses along this street. Oh my gosh! You're sitting there. You're watching Mori Povich, <laughs> and all of a sudden you you hear a trickle. And then you hear a flood. a flood and wine starts yeah, spraying many, through the gaps in your doors. How many people do you think went out with cups? And like, <laughs> I would. <laughs> how could you not? Big old, big old pitcher or something. <laughs> just bring a carboy out there. And <laughs> <laughs> just take it. <laughs> Load it up. But yeah, so that bursts through your house. You don't clean up, especially if you have carpet. My God, if they have carpet. How do you, so. It's going to be vinegar. Two tanks. 600,000 gallons. 600,000. Well, and apparently the, the distillery holds like 2 million gallons at a How time. How big is that tank? 
It's Holy a grain silo. Cow, that's crazy. It's nuts, man. Oh my. Yeah. Well, somebody had some oxygenated wine that night. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're or, if buying uh, Portuguese I mean, brandy, then uh, you better get you better hit up your local liquor store and get all the bottles you can. There's going to be a the run on it. <laughs> who lost their house are figuring out ways to I'm sure deal they're with that. very well insured, right? Surely. <laughs> all right. Last story of the night, Garrett. Did you ever see that? Um, well, you probably didn't watch the movie, but Cocaine Bear. Did you ever see no, that? No, but I've seen the, the, the Reddit hype around it. Well, this it. is White Claw Bear. <laughs> <laughs> you think it was a polar bear? <laughs> <laughs> There's the branding right there. Ah! Okay, in all the states, this could happen. You guessed it. it? Yeah. Florida. Yeah. There's in the ad on top of this. This doesn't sound real. This sounds, but <laughs> it happened. A three legged Florida bear. <laughs> You got to say that over again. <laughs> Three-legged Florida bear raided a poolside fridge for the cans of White Claw that were in it. They called this bear Tripod. <laughs> because of the three legs. Because of the three legs. Only because of the three legs. <laughs> called him Tripod. And I, he had gained that name, I guess, from his... his shenanigans yeah <laughs> he'd been seen before on a tv station but this particular visit was to a resident's garden the bear launched uh the bear launched a brazen theft of food and drinks on a swimming pool he ate the fish food we had outside next to our fish tank and proceeded to the bar <laughs> and then stole some white claws out of course this is florida his favorite flavor is mango and strawberry <laughs> they say and they say, I was not scared because we know the bear really well. He lives here. We respect their habitat as much as we can. Did, did my last sentence make it on there? Yeah. It's not known how he lost his leg. <laughs> <laughs> but we know he, is, he had a good like the, evening. They just left that mystery up to us. <laughs> you want to guess how that leg was so going? So ridiculous. It's all in your brain. So that was... I mean, if there's any title for this podcast, it is definitely Three-Legged Florida Bear... <laughs> Steals White Claw. That might be the title of this podcast episode, because that is too good. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. When I saw that one, I was like, yeah, that's got to be the last <laughs> There's the no last story. It's, it is on it. <laughs> tripod. Conrad lives down in Florida. Conrad, you should go see if you can get a selfie with Tripod. Give him some White Claw. Apparently, yeah. that's, his, <laughs> that's his thing. I'm just imagining like one of those hats with the straw glasses, <laughs> you know? Oh man, lordy lordy! Maybe there's gonna be a movie made on about him. I hope so. These are the fine folks who support my channel, members and patrons. If you'd like to become a member of my YouTube channel, click the join button right below this video. Or if Patreon. You, if you're already a member, um, you should be able to like use your free stuff in the chat somehow. I'm not really quite <laughs> sure how it all works. I, I realized the other day, I've been a member of Feywood's channel for over a year now. Hey. So at some point, when she does another live stream, I'll be able to use my, <laughs> my, hear my that, freebies. Mandy, get you it hear together. You hear that? Uh, and yes, you can also support me on Patreon, which most folks have moved to at this point because word has gotten out that Patreon pays a lot better than YouTube does. I never, I never really know because it all just lumps into the... YouTube takes like 30%. Oh, Patreon, gross. I think, takes 10 or 15. Yeah. So these are huh. the folks who support yeah. your channel. I uh, got a few new friends um, that are not on the list. I'm sorry if you didn't make it. It's not personal. It is uh, lack of me sending it to BC. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you to my friends who are supporting me. And uh, I think a great example is, you know, all the studio space that you see behind us. And I did a tour of my studio this past week. That was cool. And I, it is pretty much mostly in part to like the support from you guys because realistically YouTube is not, I mean, it's getting a little bit better depending on how the season of life, but <laughs> like aside from that, like it's not, it, it's, it's hard to do well. So having that extra help is there. It's helpful. Yeah. I noticed ad revenues really dipped Yeah, like pre summer to early summer. Like nothing was changing about content. Uh huh. <laughs> but revenues plummeted oh, yeah. for a few months. It's, it's back up now. Seasons, seasons of, of life. Well, and we were talking about the other day, we, we have a group text with Mandy 
from Faywood Mead. If you're not subscribed to Faywood Mead, you should go check out her channel. Yes, please. Um, We're talking about how it it feels like maybe the algorithm is starting to favor brewing content again. That that remains to be seen. I think that I think Mead has definitely hit a little bit, and part of it is there's a, a new person who's posting lots of YouTube shorts. I don't know if you've seen this. He's been all over the Who YouTube. Is? Um, the uh, Golden Hive Mead, I think. And I think it's hit. There's the. I mean, he gets a lot of views for for the shorts he's posting. Mm-hmm. He does really well, like with the. It's it's a whole different game to do YouTube shorts. I just can't. I hate I hate, I hate short I don't form do content. I I it's awful. Anyways, so he's doing that, and they get a bunch <laughs> of views, and so I think people then get their interest mm-hmm. into mead making, mm-hmm. and they might watch his stuff, and then go, oh, I want to do more, and then they do some more research and find things. I so. love that. I'm happy for somebody to be. The, the entry point yeah for the rest of us right <laughs> YouTube I, shorts are just so hard to do you just have to like you almost have to be like Trent Trent will make a YouTube short out of existing content yeah um, which is like YouTube short hacks probably I just like I am not thinking that far I tried ahead. to do a couple like and just pare down mine and I was like I can't I feel like I'm missing information and I don't want to like skip out and be like yeah. I don't know it's just you kind of have to you have to make the video almost to be a YouTube short sometimes. Like you can try and cut around things, but it gets really hard. Yeah. Well, and it's it's different from other short platforms. Like yeah. content that works well on TikTok or Instagram Reels won't necessarily do well on YouTube Shorts. Yeah. It's uh, it's 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 a game. It's a game, and I'm not really interested in playing it. No. Nope. <laughs> nope. All right. You ready um, to get into? Uh... Yeah. Should we should we tease upcoming projects? Oh yeah. What do I have going on? What oh, do you have going on? I got a stupid one. I'll, I'll tease this stupid one because it'll, it'll be a video eventually. I had a dumb idea to take a Bud Light clone recipe, beer recipe. Did you brew it or did you ferment it? Oh, <laughs> and um, make it into a braggot. Mm-hmm. So I took that, that clone recipe that had some repeatability. I don't know. It was one I found online. And then I added some honey to it. And so it's really kind of a stupid video because it's like it's but bud light you know Mm -hmm. but we'll see that's that's one i've got a bunch of other things that are coming out tomorrow's a video for a a a coffee um oh my gosh is i used mocha oak a coffee wine kit converted into a pie mint and so oh boy yeah how'd that turn out it's pretty good actually okay yeah i'll have to i'm they're kind of sitting for a while but it turned out pretty good i had um nathan zangmeister mm-hmm. and carissa kent who won mead stampede this year on to help me with the tasting nice. it's kind of fun sent them some stuff too so it's kind of cool actually i have stuff from, from him here that's what all this is ah right on yeah i texted with him uh the other day because you know i had shipped him all the mead stampede best of show stuff i just ship it in two boxes and so I was like following the tracking. Yeah. You're like thinking like there's hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. So I texted him. Okay. It looks like it's on your doorstep. And he was like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't worry about it. It's just like, Ugh. yeah, he posted a photo of all of those things too. It's oh, kind of fun. Right on. He says he has a good photo shoot with his um, belt buckle coming out soon. Good. So good. I hope it it's might be not safe for work. But it is. <laughs> just boots, belt, belt buckle. <laughs> Strategically placed. <laughs> It's not a very big belt buckle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shout, shout out to Faye with Mead, member for 14 months. Hey. And Conrad, member for over three years. Woo. I heard somebody, speaking of TikTok and things, somebody posted a, a Instagram short, whatever it was, real. And they were like, my 41th, 41-month-old baby. And I was like, don't you stop after like saying months when it comes to kids after like yeah, it's like three and a half years. Yeah. like I, I, I'm already was, calling mine, too. It was very weird that she was like, my 41-month-old and my 27-month-old. And I was like, I, uh, to me, I was like, this feels odd. But that just reminded me of that. That's weird. Nathan says the short videos I see are making it look easy. They make it look get quick. That's for sure. That's quick. Well, I can say this because I don't. I'm not involved with TikTokers or any of that. But a lot of those people are faking what you see. Hmm. They are not making real mead. Like they may be mixing up a real mead for right. the first part, but the, all the rest of what you see is them just faking it. Yeah. They're just making it up. They're making it look easy. They're drinking colored water or whatever. Just like all the the fake cooking videos you see on because short form content. Yeah. How many terabytes of stuff are you storing? Oh, I've I've. 
like seven hard drives at this point. Yeah. And I delete stuff when I'm done with raw files. Yeah. Really. Like it's crazy. These folks aren't storing a bunch of video for months and months at a time to show you how to make a mead. It's like one day you can see it too. Cause you watch it and you're like the lights all the same, like mm-hmm. all these things. It's, it is definitely interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah. They're faking. And, um, I, I, it's like, it's twofold. Like on one hand, I'm glad that they're an entry point for folks to be like, oh yeah, this is, this is achievable. This is accessible. On the other hand, that's what you like. That's what leads to all the prison hoochers that are like, well, my bottles exploded in my closet. Cause this TikToker said to put them in the closet, yeah. you know? And it's just like, they're not getting the information they need to do it safely or effectively. That, that big company that uh, has been toting quick alcohol is still still going strong. And um, I think it's just a testament that people people just want to make quick booze. And that's mm-hmm. not always necessarily the best way to proceed. You want to you wanna, you wanna make good booze. <laughs> right. Not just quick booze. Right. Uh, Trent from The Brew Show is in the chat, says, hey. screw five-minute crafts, more like five-minute mead. <laughs> um you ain't wrong, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, that's that's really what what they make it seem like. And you know, I it's going back to your point uh, earlier about entry level content. You know, when I was making these this beginner series that I just finished up, mm-hmm. I really wanted them to be short videos. And I watched your video, um, how to make a meet in eight minutes, over and over and over again, <laughs> thinking like, how can I do this like that, but mm-hmm. my way. And I just could never get the videos to be that short it is. because I kept feeling like I was leaving something out that was going to send somebody down the wrong yeah. avenue. I struggled with that. I was like, I, on my script of that video, I was like, just talk, 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 talk. And I wanted it to be seven minutes, but I like I had to, I, <laughs> as I was recording, I was like, there's no way. There's no way I can make this a seven minute thing. So, yeah. But that video has actually been doing pretty, pretty well. I think it's a, people, it's a solid video. People leaped from the... 60 second to the <laughs> eight minute and the, you know, they're going to start to get peaked. Their interest is peaked and now mm. they want to do more with it. And that's great. Yeah. I, I will I, take that. At some point I've, I have on my, my content calendar to do list. I've, I've had for like three years now, an item that says how to make hooch in your dorm. <laughs> We got a dog. Hold on. Boone the guard dog. Yeah, he's he's not a very good guard dog. He'll just bark and, you know, not do much else. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, I want to make a video that's like a five-minute video on just like going to the grocery store, buying some, some junk and making hooch, like yeah. dorm room hooch. Um, <laughs> and I just, I don't know if I'm ever going to make it because I'm always going to be worried that some kid's going to blow up a jug in their dorm. You I had know? a comment today on, on my, my most popular video, which is a pretty much a pr- prison hooch video, cheap wine and cider. It was a guy, he just said, I used to make this in prison. That was literally the whole comment. And I was like, I don't know. I, there's, I had lots of emotions in that moment <laughs> about that. Yeah. Not, not necessarily my proudest thing. And I wish other videos would do better, but I think the truth is people want quick alcohol and, and cheap the, and cheap. They don't, not, those are like the two things that if you don't, if it's not cheap, then yeah. Hmm. Yep. No, I'm with you, man. Shall we, uh, <laughs> you have to, you'll have to be 21 to make alcohol in your dorm. Mm-hmm. Y'all. I would definitely put that disclaimer in there. Not my. You need to be at least a senior, <laughs> and <laughs> still if you're a freshman, in the don't even think about it. <laughs> you know, we were on the the train back from Fort Worth uh, Labor Day weekend, and there were a couple of uh, rushing freshmen, OU freshmen, okay. in the seats behind us, and like, oh my god, it was such a cringy throwback because these guys were cool, right? Mm. They they were cool. They were Russian fraternities. You know, it's their, they just started their first year of college. Very, very, very cool guys. I am not as cool as these guys, right? You're a hipster, though. So. But listening to them talk about, like, oh, uh, this this fraternity, there's beer everywhere. There's, you know, you're drunk all the time. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, was I that way? 
was like which was, side were you on was was Coors Light so thrilling when I was 17 probably that I would have bragged about it openly on a train probably maybe it was weird it was very it was I it was the first time in a very long time that I have felt incredibly old I had one of those moments today <laughs> I was I saw somebody and I was like they look older than me like I feel like and they acted older and stuff and then I found out their age and I was like they're like four years younger than me like maybe I'm just an old man I don't know <laughs> you're getting there man I'm getting it old. sneaks up on you it's quick sneaking up I got teeth falling out <laughs> yeah on their own I might as well be on hospice at this point <laughs> All right. let's talk about this is a weird one I don't, social I don't know media from, yeah this is social media so we're gonna switch gears a little bit this is from this is this month in brewing it's our top five posts from around the brewing web reddit facebook yeah i think Google. it's only four this month because y'all were top boring four. this month yeah get it together <laughs> get more interesting this is there's a photo of this one this guy was racking a mead he had stabilized this is weird and it went from it was strawberry and it went from <laughs> a red pretty nice red to like an orange <laughs> A burnt orange, and yeah. it, and I don't understand what happened here. I I've, I've been <laughs> stewing on this, trying to figure out how on earth it would have changed colors, and I don't know if it was. So he said he was racking it onto stabilizers. Onto stable, okay, but I, still, that doesn't make sense that it would. I don't. There was I, a reaction. I'm not enough of a scientist to know. Yeah, I have seen another post in the past of the same thing happening. Mm. Also racking onto stabilizers, but. My question, you know, especially with something that hasn't been exposed to any oxygen at all. Oh, yeah. Is maybe all those color compounds just oxidize during transfer. Because, I, I mean, that, that'll happen like, you know, they open, they'll open up like a mummy's tomb. And it'll just like disintegrate, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> it hasn't been exposed to anything right. for 2,000 years. Hmm. And so... I never thought mummy's tomb to me. I didn't know that we were going to make a parallel, but I'm all for it. I'm, I'm for trying the... to draw comparisons <laughs> for the, the instructional benefit of the viewer. Doing White claw bear <laughs> in mummy's tomb. <laughs> it all ties together. There's a common thread. There's a common thread. What do you think? You think it's pH? Maybe so. I mean, I don't know. That's what's so weird to me. It I'm going to put up really, the picture again. It makes me want to do some like, uh, like try this. And maybe it was something specific to strawberry. I don't know. Texas Longhouse Mead says, seems like a quick mallard reaction. I don't think any ducks were involved in this. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's weird. Look at that. It's that such is... a beautiful red color. I would be so proud of that mm -hmm. color and so disappointed. I, I love that. So I just imagined in this moment, this guy was like racking it. And he's like, honey, get the, get the camera to the photo of this. This ain't right. Baby, get in here. <laughs> bring My meat ain't working. <laughs> bring, bring the Polaroid. <laughs> Hope we don't talk like that. People think we do, for sure. Yeah, I mean. Well, I don't have a, I don't have resolve, and I'm sorry to this person. I don't, I don't know, think it's he, weird. I don't I, know that he found one even on Reddit. Though. I feel bad for him. You know, my, my... Conspiracy theories were thrown. Recommendation, if this happens to you, is to buy some red food dye and put it in there. <laughs> Change it back. Somebody said probably <laughs> anthrocyanins and the strawberries. I don't know what that is. I think it's the thing that they're color that indicators makes them red. found in food that are pH sensitive. It's the it's uh you can you can take those as a supplement. Anna believes this. I don't know if there's any truth to it. And it it gets in your skin and, and helps prevent sunburn somehow. Oh. It's uh the same thing that uh makes flamingos pink. Oh. <laughs> it's they eat like pink shrimp and turn pink. I may be making all of this up. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's like, some some <laughs> flamingo scientist is like oh. specifically is a <laughs> yeah. fl flamingo specialist who only this deals guy. with flamingo and science. And they homebrew, so they're listening to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, they like to get drunk with the flock on the weekends. All right, well, um, this one, next one <laughs> so stupid is wild to me, and I wonder if it works. This is a. 3D printed can seamer. As mm -hmm. somebody who's recently in the past year spent a a lot of money mm -hmm. on a can seamer. If this was something that did work, I would be all for it. Yeah, now, so I, 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 I only out. included a screenshot. Um, the, the description for this podcast 
on YouTube. We'll have links to all of these stories. Yep. Uh, but there are more pictures in the forum thread. Yeah. He... And this is from Homebrew Talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He had some different rollers, too, and I don't know. It's very interesting. Yeah, so he 3D printed it. He bought the rollers. That's the only part he paid for. And then he designed and 3D printed all the rest of it. And it bolts onto a wall. Mm-hmm. And then you see your can on the wall. Watching the demo video was both impressive and very concerning because <laughs> it is, it is really shaky. And he's like you know seaming it the one way and then turning it back for the other seam and it I just, just like, don't know I, it I, seems like it would be inconsistent well that and i would be afraid it'd break like because like when i'm doing mine i have to put a lot of pressure to really get that thing to like seal down sometimes so i don't know i i would get sketched out but also maybe it maybe it works and if it does <laughs> maybe he'll share his stuff <laughs> there's there's uh several different comments about how i'm wrong about why flamingos are pink <laughs> Flamingo experts, I told you. Flamingo scientists in the I'm chat. I'm so glad there are so many flamingologists in the chat tonight. That's really, uh, really helpful. Oh, so, so Dominic says, a couple days after this color change photo, I had a really similar thing. I made a beautifully pink blood orange lemonade. Flamingo pink. Some yeah, say. flamingo pink. Yeah. <laughs> he actually held a feather up to it <laughs> to verify. Which during racking into K-Meta only went a darker maroon red. Interesting. I think this is something that man-made mead needs to experiment with. I'll let him know. <laughs> First, we got to get a flamingo. Yep. <laughs> Step one, flamingo feather. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Anyway, this well... Is a, this, this whole little... Um, I don't know anything about flamingos. That's what I learned from the chat tonight. <laughs> yeah, go for it. D- DIY is... Uh, is in the house. It's a theme tonight. Theme tonight. We've got our DIY can seamer. We've got our DIY homemade corker. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's like a... <laughs> I mean, the, this is almost akin to somebody taking a hammer to the... To... <laughs> That's probably more effective to use a hammer. Like, what is going on here? There's nothing to compress the cork. I don't see any indicator the on the... Yeah, or anything on the bottom either. Yeah, and the cork is just <laughs> whole, so it's just like taking a, taking your hand and just like... Shoving trying it. To... My first corker was like that. I I suffered with a really terrible corker yeah, for... I, I, I almost feel like I would have done this. This is like an idea I would have done, though. It's like, I, I can make my own. And, <laughs> you know, go get a, a door hinge and yeah. you know, cut a board in half. And, you know, maybe it works. Maybe. Maybe we're judging too quick. Maybe this is the way to do it. It don't look like it's going to (laughs) work. Not when you don't have something to compress the cork. If you're not compressing the cork, you're just jamming it in. (laughs) So, I don't know. I'm going to let you take this last one. Okay. I don't don't even remember what it was. This is... Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, We've been waiting for this for years. Is it Bootleg Biology that's doing it? Yeah. Yep. Bootleg Biology uh, has been around for a long time. And I, they're celebrating some milestone, seven years, 10 years, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> they're going to be doing a R slash homebrewing yeast. Mm. So they've, they've been going into, into their yeast storage cellars and finding all the weird strains they've got. They took a bunch of comments from Redditors about what they would like to see. They've done like a round of voting. And they're doing this yeast blend that's going to be dedicated to R slash homebrewing. I thought it was kind of cool. So how does that work for? I mean, I guess you'd just buy it whenever it's oh oh okay. available, presumably. We could probably get a hold of it for I'd be free to get a hold of some. We're we're influencers, right? <laughs> I mean, we're not making YouTube shorts, but no, we're not that big. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. I, don't know, I thought it was though. cool. You know, someone asked DV10. I bet maybe DV10 will be in there. Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the people's yeast. People. The people's say. yeast. <laughs> DV10, such a crowd pleaser. I've never uh, used that before. I've never either. used DV10, but I keep hearing about it, and I maybe I need. To There's a it. reason you keep hearing about it. It's because certain people won't shut up about it. <laughs> that's, that's their whole <laughs> shtick. Is. Oi, that dream. Dios mio. Anyway, that's cool. You yeah. know, I, it's not like a new strain of yeast. I think it's going to be a, a yeast blend, mm. uh, blended to work together symbiotically. So, oh, we'll have to get cool a hold of some. Well, all right, we should reach out to him. We should. I'm all for it. 
<laughs> we uh we've got some confessions to take, BC. Oh yeah. We people yeah. have been stewing, they've been um sitting in the what's the thing called in the Catholic Church where you go in and the confessional? It, oh, it's just confessional <laughs> cute. I don't know. I'm not Catholic. <laughs> They've been sitting in there. We've been sitting on the other side talking on the phone this whole time. Oh, we're and on we're the phone? The, yeah, we're talking. What kind of confessional is this where we're using I know, the phone? I know. We're and then we put it down, and we're like, all right, I'm ready. It's like being in prison <laughs> where you sit on the other side of the glass yeah. with the phone. <laughs> yep. Well, what kind of conf- We're talking to someone else. We're having a side conversation. We're talking to God. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, yeah, and now we're like, hey, oh, we're, we're ready. We're ready. Here we go. And we put the phone down. Got it. And we're ready to So hear. we're prepared. We've got your Hail Marys ready. Have you ever been to Catholic Church? Um, yes, once. <laughs> a Catholic wedding. Longest wedding I've ever been to. Huh, interesting. I, I usually uh, recommend Catholic Church because of how punctual it is. They start and stop at the same time every Sunday. No, I'm a, I'm a devout Baptist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say uh, Catholics drink on the front porch and Baptists drink on the back. Or on a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I was raised in the church, mm-hmm. so I feel like I can have whatever opinion I want. Mm-hmm. I like Catholic Church, though. It's good leg workout. If you go to Catholic Church squat, at, squat, at squat. least <laughs> once a week, you're not missing leg day. <laughs> the music's pretty good. And if you find one of those churches that's got real like high cathedral ceilings, it's beautiful, sounds, sounds, beautiful yeah. music. Get that echo in there. I like Catholic Church. If I was a religious person, I'd probably be a Catholic. Mostly due to the punctuality. (laughs) (laughs) So that said, Father Freeman over here and Father Phillips are gonna are gonna help you out with your confessions. Tell us your brewing sins. Drop them in the chat. Yeah, this is kind of to. uh, We're we're curious. I feel like a lot of people um, have moments where you do something silly or you uh, you know you have a little moment where you do something that is not something you're super proud of um we're curious this is a safe safe space cammy poo face says does bc have any teasers like flamingo feathers what are we talking about here not that he is public <laughs> <laughs> he keeps all his teasers private <laughs> oh man let's see teasers. let's see dv10 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 Beatrix's dv10 is ec1118 for nerds that's that's just like the is that, most that does not make me want to use it in the weeds brewing joke you could make or fermenting joke sorry that's real about the weddings <laughs> they are very long <laughs> surely some people have have had some do you have anything any do we... any brewing sins yes um if i okay i'll give you a few okay if i buy brand new bottles from the brew shop i don't clean them Amen, brother. <laughs> if I see that thing is sealed, I am good. I'm just gonna. I, I mean, I'll, I'll usually I'll dunk them in sanitizer, but yeah. usually <laughs> I don't clean new bottles. No. Uh, I, I I very infrequently sanitize my gear. I'll, I'll I'll say that too. Usually, the time I sanitize my gear is when I'm mixing something up for the yep. first time, or when I'm taking hydrometer readings. Mm-hmm. But I get lazier and lazier about sanitizing the further along into a brew i get especially when it's something for me that's like this is 17 percent alcohol i'm like that, that, that siphon's probably clean enough right yeah. <laughs> i'll let it go i mean i use this a lot and that's it's got a little pink here <laughs> right a little now color to it it's kind it's of a, a flamingo hey. kind of pink I got a theme here tonight <laughs> But this is my, I mean, I just dunk, I'll do it quick. And, you know, some people will say, like, it's got to be a minute and a half in the star sand before it's really done. Uh, and I'm like, well. Oh, I never do that. <laughs> like, so my, good for an hour. My hydrometer will get a dunk, and then it goes right into the carboy. <laughs> yep. Yep. Do we have what, 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 uh, tell tell no. us your sins. Definitely the bottle thing. That is a, a common one for me. Mm-hmm. I did that actually this past week. I, I had bought some, some bottles, and I was mm-hmm. like, I got one for you. Do do you find yourself licking honey off of your fingers oh, and and not sanitizing your hands? Oh gosh, no, <laughs> I'll be honest. Away. Very rarely am I like scrubbing down like yeah. the people who are like taking steel wool to their hands before they brew. Yeah. I'm like, golly, <laughs> like I I feel weird about it every time I get honey on my hands and lick it off, and then I'm like, eh, 
I'll just cut that out of the video. <laughs> no one's going to see that, right? Because yeah. for YouTube, we have to we have to demonstrate sanit- sanitization. Because if we don't, mm-hmm. there will be comments. Yeah. But the reality is, I'm going to get heat for saying Uh-oh. this. The reality is, as long as you sanitize at the beginning, concerns over sanitization and mold and vinegar yeah. are really overblown. Especially really. when you're using brewing yeast specific mm-hmm. that is made for brewing most of that stuff is like has a competitive kill factor that will take out any wild yeast and that's not to say be lackadaisical about it but there's definitely moments where i'm like well i i'm not going to walk over here and dunk my hydrometer i'm just going to do this real fast so do you uh when you take a hydrometer reading after fermentation do you pour it into pour it back or do you drink it uh generally i pour it back um, I'm if I'm brewing five gallons, usually I'm putting the hydrometer directly in mm. to the carboyer bucket. Carboy, whoa, yeah. Just oh, put I guess a little it's full to the top. Okay. Or yeah. or if it's lower, you put a piece of unflavored, unwaxed dental floss. You tie a, a knot around it and you just put it in there, let it go, and mm-hmm. pull it back out. Uh, but if I'm Talking doing right one gallon batch, I always just dump it back in. And I, I I usually am not even like gentle with it. You know, some people say, "Oh, just like tip it and pour it." <laughs> No, I just he's shaking it at the top. <laughs> yeah, put it in the blender first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so we have some. All right. Let's see. Christopher Morrow says I dropped a book in the bottling bucket once. Bottled it anyway. Dumped a it two book? months later. <laughs> a book? That's what he says. You were like reading over your your, your bottling <laughs> container, and you were like, "Whoa." <laughs> just fell in i mean <laughs> bottling is boring i'll give them that uh good on you to read while you're bottling <laughs> they would <laughs> says they would says but uh i did forget to feed my pawpaw mead and then i let it sit for a long time and now i don't know if it's any good because it was living in a bucket mm, i don't know that it, i leave that. my stuff in a bucket more often i think than people like would like but <laughs> yeah texas longhouse meat says i broke my auto siphon and had to pour one carboy into the other oh no <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> that's, that's pretty sinful that is pretty rough. uh you're gonna you're gonna need about 69 hail marys to to atone for that one carlos <laughs> conrad says sin i've made mead failures where the flavors didn't come out right it wasn't bad but it wasn't what it was supposed to be but it is good enough for the adult children that raid my wine rack. <laughs> yeah. Smart. Do you, do you think that that's worth atonement or do you think that's forgivable? I think that's a forgivable thing. I think that's maybe because it's something I've done. There's <laughs> some things. <laughs> wow. This isn't a sin, but uh, our Lord of change here says that uh, when making mead, he uses gloves a Tyvek, and a Tyvek jumper. <laughs> overboard with the sanitizing can you imagine like putting on a hazmat suit (laughs) no way i mean i have i'll confess the sin i had uh uh, the oh i got one (laughs) i just remembered one uh bung come off of a carboy outside and i got probably 30 flies in a traditional mead and i just racked it over to a different carboy and let it keep going yep tastes great by the way yeah, I, I will mean, not tell anyone I give that mead to yeah. if there were a bunch of dead flies floating in it. I had, um, in that brewing vessel right there, I was mm. stirring up, before primary, I was stirring up a bunch of stuff in it, and that my drill thing fell off all the way to the bottom. Oh. And you just... <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just full arm... I just, it, I just grabbed it. We should, we should um, now, now explain I did, what he's, he's talking about. This is what, a 30-gallon? No, it's about 15. 15-gallon? 15 15, it it's a deep. 15-gallon. It's like... I. So what I did, now, this was totally not... Like, I was trying to be conscious of it, but I literally took star sand, and I put it on my arm, and then took some water and went like this. Uh-huh. And then... <laughs> so, like, nice. I, I star sanded my arm, but I was still, like dunking my whole arm into a brew you know like <laughs> uh hey yip yo hey, good to see you a long time 
Uh, that's that's, that that's most of them. There's some interesting stuff here and there. They're kind of talking about licking themselves and Ew. oh, <laughs> <laughs> things such as that. Uh, Steven says he licked caramelized honey off a spatula he used to blend it into the mead. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. Been yeah. there. I just don't worry about sanitizing. I've had one accidental infection in 13 years. I had, I've had, um, I had one and now looking back on it, I think it was, it was a strawberry mead and I think it just developed a pellicle on the top and I got so scared. Because I was like, what is this thing? It looks scary at the time. Uh, other than that, I really haven't had much. I've had a couple of little cases where I've been like, this is a little vinegary. but <laughs> Wow, Cammy Poo Face. I think you might have to give some, some penance for uh, this one. I cut my hand, tightening the tap to a one-gallon keg. Wiped the blood and served it to my friends anyway. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Wait, hold on. Cut her hand. <laughs> uh-huh into the brew like uh, this thing is has had is now a <laughs> cut their hand on the tap wipe the blood away and served it to the friends anyway so i'm not sure if blood got into the tap handle or the tap or the faucet yeah oh i see okay i see what you're saying now. that is an interesting debacle <laughs> quite a blood sacrifice yeah <laughs> i don't for know your brewing. there's something about bodily fluids where i think that that may be where i draw the line only because... You 420 know, like, Hail Marys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, there you go. There's your, your penance. I ferment in the shower, says somebody. Mm. I, see, I, uh, I Philosophy will... did a uh, bathtub beer. Oh, no. Like, in the bathtub? How they, like, br- he out? brewed it. I don't remember what the whole bit of the video was. Maybe it's just brewing beer in a bath- bathtub. It was really interesting. And then he had his dad taste it. He didn't tell his dad that it was a bathtub beer. <laughs> My bathtub would definitely drain all that beer down the drain very slowly overnight. His did not. So that was an interesting one. Like, I would have to, like, seal my drain shot. Maybe he had some YouTube magic that he pulled. And maybe it's a lie. <gasps> I don't know. He had a time lapse of things happening. So oh, yeah. I, I kind of want... I, I oh. trust brewlosophy. Oh, yeah. They do some real, yeah. real deal testing. Interesting. Larry says, no chicha for BC. Hey, I have had chicha in Peru from the 55-gallon drum. There you go. Take that, Larry. Is nasty. (laughs) It's nasty. Never again. There are 44 people watching. I just want to remind you all to smack that like button Mm -hmm. because it helps promote the video. If you don't have time to watch the video side in the future... Or you just want to listen to it again. We do put out an audio-only version, mm-hmm. and that is on all streaming platforms for uh, for any podcast. So you can find us there at Hubbrew Guys Podcast. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are listening right now, and you might not even know there's a video version. There's a video version of us. You can see us talking right now if you're watching that. So there's both sides, but we would love to push you either way to listen to us. Chat about things. Brewing. Fermenting. Fermenting. Thank you. We are fermenters. <laughs> Mazers. Uh, anything, any other interesting stuff of note? Any announcements? If, or? If you're local to um, Oklahoma City or Edmond. Good call. Um, Good specifically, call. It's, it's a event in Edmond, Oklahoma, or if you want to drive up. I, I'll put in information in the Discord okay. um, for it because I don't have the address and all that stuff. Right now, off the top of my head, from my Discord specifically, and I'm sure BC can throw it in, in as I well. Will. But we are pouring some of our homebrew. Um, I'm taking an apple cinnamon and a coffee blossom hydromel, and BC's taking a couple things. I have a cinnamon cream hydromel and a cherry limeade hydromel. So we are two of probably eight homebrewers setting up tents and things for this evening. It's like a, I think it's five bucks, ten bucks or something to get in, but you get a glass and then you get to walk around and Mm -hmm. just. Free samples of homebrew. Not free. Yeah. You know. I'm supposed to say hi to my baby who is watching Aww. out there. Hi, baby. <laughs> I'll be I'll be home in a while. She's standing right in front of <laughs> right in front of the TV saying oh, hi. Oh, that's so cute. Hello, little one. Uh, yeah, come come join us for that. I think it's going to be fun. It's on the 30th of this month. Sorry, 30th. I'll put more information in Discord. And stuff. it's from like 4 to 8 p.m. Yeah. So it's a nice, a nice little window. Nice long window. 
Yeah, are, do, am I just bringing kegs? Do you? Do we need a tent or? Oh, I, I need to double check that. I'll figure. There's some details that we're gonna iron out on the side. I, may... I do have a specific. If you are, <laughs> this is might be your, another reason for you to come. I am gonna take. I have a keg of something, not carbonated, but it is your chance to review a mead. You are the tasters for this mead that will go on YouTube. I've already done all the B-roll. I've already done all the creation of the mead. And I'm having people basically fill out this Google form as they taste it and just give it a rating. And I'm going to compile all that, and that will be kind of my tasting notes for it. And so I'm going to open that That's up cool. for people. And so it should be kind of fun to see what that is like. So if you're local to middle of Oklahoma City, Ed Edmond area, or if you want to drive in, it's a Saturday night. So you could, I guess, stay the night. Yeah. Get an Airbnb. Do There's some hotels up in that area. Yeah. Apparently, we're supposed to say hi to my child again. Hi, child. And comment on how cool her pink scissors are. Your pink, the flamingo scissors? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I can't believe you have those pink flamingo so scissors. So, we've got this pair of pink scissors that I use in the kitchen. Kitchen scissors, <laughs> right? And she's got a pair of wooden scissors. Mm. Mm -hmm. and she was running around holding the real scissors the other day, so I had to take them from her, and I tried to trade her for the oh, fake no. scissors. Not go that was a no-go. Well. So she and I went into the backyard, and we spray-painted her scissors pink mm. so that they would match my scissors. There you go. And uh, apparently that worked. That Kids was all are so took. dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Babies Don't are listen dumb. to him. Don't listen to Uncle Garrett. <laughs> You're so smart. <laughs> when we were driving home today, I was, I was telling her, when we get home, I've got to gotta turn around and leave because i got to go see Uncle Garrett. And she said, Uncle Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Garrett's silly. Oh. Yeah, she loves you. That was very fun. She's a good kid. Come see us on the 30th. <laughs> um, we're Up in back. Guthrie. Okay. The, uh, right? No, it's, it's like What's, North Edmond. Okay, well, it's called Guthrie something. No, I know. It's like close to there. Okay, well, it's close to Guthrie. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Come see us. Yes. Well, I'll put information in Discords if you want to come do that. But then uh, we're planning, of course, being on being back next month for more brewing news. If you find an article or something that you are interested in, like you find something that you go, holy cow, this would be perfect for the Homebrew Guys podcast. I have a specific channel for this podcast where you can hop in. You can say, hey, this was a really crazy article. Um, it'd be fun to talk about it. So hop on into the Man Made Me Discord to check that out. <laughs> uh. Anna sent a picture of my child showing us the scissors. That's very cute. That's so cute. <sighs> She's a lot. You about uh, you about ready to have one of those? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> oh my let's god! Put can a lock you, on the door. <laughs> can you imagine both of us having children at the same time? Well, I feel like there's a great likelihood that that will happen. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's that's. <laughs> And mine is going to be so much older and such a bad influence on yours. <laughs> just train, just train her up. Yikes. Uh, okay. Uh, you've got a video coming out tomorrow. 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 That's my coffee wine kit turned into a pie mint. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're a Patreon member or YouTube member, there's a, <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, what's the next one coming out? I don't even know. Like the top of my head. I've had so much going on. I just finished up a bunch of fun videos. So I'm excited for those things too. I'm getting ahead. I'm way ahead of schedule. Always. Again. You're always ahead. It's a good problem to have. He'll be like six months ahead and text me and be like, what are you putting out this week? And I'm like, I don't know. Still trying to decide. I used to. <laughs> what's crazy to me is I used to literally schedule out my videos like three months in advance. That was a time. I would literally just like not even think about it. And that was when I did two a week. That's it. So I had cruise control. I had like 16 lined up. And I would just auto, but now that I have sponsors and things, I have to like throw ads yeah. in. When you see some ads, I'm going to put a beautiful little yellow bar at the bottom and know that's for you. That is for you to go ahead and hit that button real fast. Um, you know, I, I, I do the, the yellow bar too. And I was thinking today as I was animating my yellow bar yeah. going across for this week's video that I almost want to get a shirt that says like... <laughs> paid for by or ad something like that <laughs> yeah. so as people are hitting the fast forward they know that mm. when the shirts goes back to this a black shirt <laughs> that they've skipped the entire ad yep <laughs> i think advertisers might not care for that approach i don't they <laughs> apparently don't care about the yellow bar and that is the most to me i'd be like what the heck like you were clearly counting down the end of this <laughs> moment for you to not talk about our product but there will be more 
Yeah, I'm curious, chat. Do you notice our yellow status bars going across the bottom, letting you know when the ad is almost over? And do you use them? Or do you watch the whole uh, ad? I, I use that button. I fast forward through all ads. Same. Uh, but, you know, they help pay for the channel. Mm -hmm. They help get us gear. That uh, So the video that I have coming out on Friday is a sous vide video. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spoil it, but it's going to be showing you three different ways to use a sous vide on the same batch of mead. Ooh. So we're going to use it f from start to finish. Basically, this whole mead lived uh -huh. its life inside of a crock pot. And so that's coming out, but I, you know, Viver yeah. sponsored it. They sent me the gear for it. Then, and so I probably would have never done a sous vide video had I not had access to that gear because yep. I'm not really going to use it in my regular life that frequently, <laughs> you okay. know? I'll say this one here because I think it's funny. Um, and the, the people who's, who sent me this wine fridge will not watch this. Um, I got a, a wine fridge and um, it's for my mother-in-law. So when you see a review of a wine fridge... Um, by a random brand, know that my mother-in-law is very happy with me. Comment, hi, mom, on the video. <laughs> there you go. And they'll know that, that way. So um, that's the whole reason I got that one. I mean, I've had many a fridge come my way, and most of them make their way to some other... I've given away a lot of fridges. Yeah, yeah I'm same. I've and got... I gave nice one story. away to work. I gave one away to, to David for I his keep store. some of them, but... Yeah, uh... I had a thought. <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> Anna's texting me things about the stream. Ideas. Planning. Um, I had a thought and I lost a thought. Uh -oh. uh, sponsors are great. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that it's not a turnoff to y'all when you see a sponsor on our, our videos. I hope you also know that we are are pretty diligent about who we accept on our channels too. I mean, we get, I, I get a lot. I don't know he gets a lot of things where it's like, well, is this appropriate? And there's a lot of spam ones. You know, if I was taking every ad, like I had one for uh, cutlery. It was like like mm. this weird knife that was an Amazon something. They're like, we want to send you this to review yeah. for the for your channel. Or like um, one was like a posted, like a wall holder for like uh, papers. Like you just put like, <laughs> you know, just for like teaching. For like something like that. Like a teacher would have it. Yeah. It's like, I mean, would I put it like, like no, I'm not going to do that. So, what are you supposed to do with that? Yeah. So yeah. like a lot of it's just spam. We try to find ones that are appropriate. Yeah. And, and I try to make it a point to, to go back and, and continue working with folks who have made it a really pleasant process. Yeah. And I like to work with folks who, who give statistics, right? Like, um, I did a collab with Pinter hmm. for their Kickstarter and I, I basically put out the video a day before their kickstarter ended yep. but they were so kind to give me statistics to let me know how many people click through That's how many cool. people purchased and so you don't always get that you don't always get that and so it's nice to work with folks who provide you a little bit of feedback to say hey you know thank you for helping mm -hmm. here's where your audience was at on this product yep. so you can kind of know what it is you all want to see on the channel. And if, if it flopped, maybe we don't work with those folks again. <laughs> yeah. I've had a, yeah, a lot of those. <laughs> I'm excited for the sous vide video, though. I think that's going to be a good one. I, I should I have brought you a bottle of it today. I'm all for it. I'm all for it next, yeah. next time. It'll sit in the fridge until until you can try one. Uh, it was interesting. and uh, But I do have a video um, that Garrett and I are going to collaborate on. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll mention this, and then we can, we can throw it a close. Uh, I'm going to challenge him to ferment with three different honeys because i know garrett loves a good boche so That's i'm going to do stovetop sous vide mm -hmm. and microwave boche honey mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna caramelize it all to the same darkness and then he's gonna ferment it and then we're gonna do a blind triangle do i get to taste. choose the yeast yeah okay sure i hope you'll go with the red wine yeast but i'm not going to tell you how to live your life but that said i think it's going to make for an interesting video because I am here to tell you that I am a believer in Boche in, in the sous vide, but I think that microwave Boche is the next big thing. Oh, that's a hot take. It's a hot take. Might end up on the next episode of Homebrew Sins. But, uh, <laughs> Man claims microwave Boche. <laughs> next big thing. Next big thing. We're reporting on our own article made about us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about us, and there's like a fire in the background. All right, close us out, Garrett. Well, we've appreciated uh, your time, and thank you for 
I mean, we've consistently had like 30 viewers and um, it's been a lot of fun to chat with you. And if you'd like to be a part of the conversation, we do this live. If you're listening way post uh, show, that is a, <laughs> that's totally fine. But if you want to like, if you'd like to be part of the conversation, we do this live. Thank you to our YouTube members and our patrons. These are literally the reason we can keep doing these things and uh, helps us support our channel. Uh, again, sponsors are great, but you guys are more awesome than sponsors. We appreciate you. We both have discords. If you want to be part of our discords to chat even more about uh, fermenting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot what the term was. Yeah. And you can hop in. We, we love to chat about it and answer questions and um, you know learn from you as well. I learn a lot from the experiences of my yeah. Discord members. For Probably sure. as much as you might learn from me, I've learned twice as much from you. So I, I hope you know that. But yeah, it's been fun. Episode 12 in the books. We did it. One year. <laughs> Homebrew guys. 12, four, thir- 14 months. <laughs> we got a couple. We got a couple little moments in there. But we'll be back next month, hopefully. Sure will. And we'll have an update for you on uh, what happened with the event we're pouring out on the 30th. There's going to be a lot of updates. Competitions, events. It's true. It's going to be good. Until next time, America <laughs> and the rest of the world. Um, what, what? Mahalo? <laughs> Aloha? What's the one that Stitch says? <laughs> it means family. <laughs> Something. Good. Ohana or something. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>